Hey, Joe Gilder here. Welcome to another episode of Mixed Together. If you are, this is the first video you've seen in this series, head over to the link in the description below uh, over to homestudiocorner.com and there'll be a place there for you to sign up to receive these tracks so you can mix it along with me. If you have been following the entire time, thank you. I hope this has been enjoyable and hopefully informative and helpful for you. And I hope you've been mixing along and are seeing some cool results. Uh, I plan to do more of these. I already have one already in the works uh, to follow up this one. So we'll turn this into, there will be at least two seasons of Mixed Together. Season one, season two. Uh, and who knows after that. But uh, this has been fun. I do think we are dangerously close to uh, going past the mix and over mixing this thing. Which is easy to do uh, when you do these videos because I want to show stuff. Um, which inevitably makes me take longer to actually do the mix, and you lose a little bit of that gut instinct stuff because I'm stopping every 10 seconds to say, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm doing. So all that in mind, the only thing I think I need to look at on this mix before I kind of do my final process uh, is the solo section. Uh, I've not done anything to the solo track, which is here. And I'm not saying I need to EQ or do anything to it, but a uh, quick listen before I fired up the video, I think it just needs to be a little louder. And then, so let me turn it up and let's decide if we're happy with that. And then uh, we'll do kind of my, I'll show you my process for how to know when I'm finished. <laughs> I mean, that, that's kind of the tone I want. It's kind of messy and garage y. Uh, I like it. I'm not going to do anything else to it. Okay, so that was quick. Here is probably one of the, hopefully, maybe one of the more beneficial parts of this series is all right, so we've done a bunch of stuff. How do we know when we're finished? I've talked about this before. I'm going to show you this um, kind of in real time how I do it. So for me, the process for me looks like listening to this mix. Um, at least once, sometimes multiple times on multiple systems and taking notes of things that I would like to change, if anything. Now, the key to doing this is you can't listen for 20 seconds and then stop and make an adjustment and then listen again because you're trying to get a, an idea of what the entire mix sounds like. So, for example, if you're at this point in the mix where you've kind of addressed everything and you're feeling pretty good, if you go in and you're listening to verse one and you say, well, that, that main rhythm guitar is too loud, let me pull it down. And then you get to verse two, or maybe the, the final chorus, you say, you know what, that rhythm guitar is too quiet, let me turn it back up. What just happened? You turned it down, then you turned it up. Guess what? You're exactly where you were. So listening through in context, I can make a note and say, okay, uh, rhythm guitar feels too quiet in verse one, or too loud in verse one. And then later I can say, kind of make notes of, yeah, it feels too loud in, in the chorus, and also too loud here, and also too loud here, so I can know it's too loud overall, I can bring it down. But if I make notes, you know, if I note that it needs to be turned up in the verse, but then I get into the second verse and I know, know it's actually at the perfect level here, that tells me that I need to just automate that guitar part up just for that section as opposed to up overall. That's where we really start to waste our time mixing is when we, we hear something, we tweak it, and then later on we untweak it because we're, we're just making changes as we go and we're not getting a bigger picture view of things, okay? So the way I like to do this, and I'm not going to do it exactly the way I normally do it. I like writing things on paper whenever I can. So normally I have like a legal pad of some sort, and I just make these little squares, like check boxes. When I hear something, I make a square, I write down what needs to change, and then I keep going. So the rules are, write it down, and do not let yourself touch anything. I'm going to move this to the start here. I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to let the entire thing run, and I'm not going to touch anything as much as I might want to, I'm only going to listen critically and take down notes of things that I would like to change. Now, a couple of variations on this. You can do it. What Some some ways I'll do it is I'll listen on my big speakers. Then I'll turn right back around and listen on my small speakers. Do the same process. Take a separate set of notes. Because um, sometimes there'll be similarities between the two. Or there'll be things that will stand out on one that don't stand out on the other. And then even um, listening on like earbuds. Like that'll be maybe the third way that I do it. Um so, or, or other headphones. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to probably listen through twice. Okay. So this is going to be, this is about a four minute song. So this will be eight minutes of just listening on two different systems. And, um, what I'm going to do is 
I'll skip ahead in the video so you don't have to listen through to it twice. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I will start playback, and I've got my notes app pulled up. So I'll just take notes here. It gives me these little check boxes where I can type something and then check check it off once I've done it. So I'm essentially creating a to-do list of things to do um, to essentially finish the mix. Once I go through that to-do list and I can and they're all done, then I go back and I start the process again. I listen and I take notes and I do those things and then I listen and I take notes until there's no notes to take, right? Until it's done. So ideally, maybe there'll be six or seven things I want to address and then I'll do them, then I'll listen again, and there'll be three things. And then I'll do those things and I'll listen again and maybe there's one thing. And so it's just kind of a continuing process. But one thing to remember is when you get to this phase and knowing when you're at this phase is tricky, I don't know exactly how to tell you, other than you've addressed everything that was major and you're kind of wondering what's next. If that's where you are in your mix and you've kind of, you've got everything, you've listened to everything and you've processed it as much as it needs, that's when I would say maybe start this process. Um, and the, the, the other rule that goes along with it is, let's say I have turn up kick, turn down solo, et cetera, et cetera. When I get done with these, it's not time to just listen and start randomly tweaking stuff again. We are no longer allowed to do that. Once I've done everything on my list, it's time to go back and do a listen again and do the same process. So you only do what you wrote down that stood out to you as opposed to kind of being all free spirited. We're, we're out of free spirit mode. We're into like, all right, we're honing in. We're beginning our descent. We're going to land this thing and finish this mix. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. I'm going to hit play and listen through on my big speakers. And then I'm actually going to play it again and listen through on my small speakers and take notes on both systems. And then I'll come back and I'll, I'll talk through what I have and then we'll work our way through that list. Um, I will fast forward. I'll let the mix play out once. So if you want to listen on your big speakers and take your own notes, please do. Uh, and then if you want to rewind and play it again on different set of whatever listening things you have, uh, feel free to do that as well. Um, so we're going to say, this is my big speaker notes section, pass, and then we'll move on from there. Okay. I will, uh, I'll let you see what notes I'm taking as we go. And I think that's it. So let's do it. <laughs> Gotta know what's the ROI 
Okay, welcome back. Two listens later. And this is, if you're kind of antsy, not antsy, maybe impatient <laughs> like I am, this that may be excruciating for you. To sit and to just listen and to take notes and to see things like that snare and intro guitar need to change. Oh, I really want to go change them. It's so good to just stop. Sit on your hands if you have to. Get some handcuffs. Have a friend pin you down. Whatever you need. Um... That was weird. Anyway, so I've listened on my main big speakers and also on my crap speakers, which if you're not familiar with those, hold on. It's uh, these guys right here. I don't know if you can see that. Little Roland. Um, I got them 10 years ago. MA Stereo Micro Monitor MA8. Oh, hang on. I got to sneeze. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and you know, they're, they just don't sound super great and they're perfect. They're very mid rangey and they let me hear kind of, if anything's in that mid range that on a mid rangey sounding system is going to stand out too much, it stands out really well. So let me kind of just quickly kind of walk you through what we have going on here. So, um, intro guitar, a little brighter intro snare, a little brighter, uh, the swirly delay thing that we did on the background vocals feels a little loud going into the before the PC went down, I don't know how I wrote down, before the pre-chorus, uh, oh, it needs to be turned down, um, the, it felt like the upper mids have a, on the vocal, the lead vocal could use a notch in there somewhere, and then at the end, I made another note that the snare just feels a little too loud, and like it's poking through the mix, and not in a cool way, um, and at the solo and the final chorus, so if I was writing this on paper, you know, I'd draw a line between an arrow from this note, to this note because they're related, um, but that's that's what I heard on my big speakers, um, and then now I went to my crap speakers, and I heard a lot of the same things. So I put an asterisk next to the ones that are the same. So that one is this, I heard the same thing on both speakers, which tells me that's a good indication that it needs to happen. Versus if I only hear it on one over the other, you, it may may or may not need to happen. Um, this one I, on these smaller speakers, the vocal definitely on the right in front of me that upper mid frequency was really cutting like my head off so need to deal with that and i'll probably deal with that while listening on these crappy speakers so that i can really find it easily um and even on this one chorus one the snare the snare felt a little loud so i think overall i might need to bring that snare down a little bit and maybe make it brighter so volume down brightness up that might be the perfect combination for this and then the solo guitar is a bit loud or spiky. So I can't decide if it's just a volume thing or if there was a kind of an upper mid that was jumping out of these small speakers that I'd like to take care of. So that's my to-do list. That is my process. Um, and I just go from here. I literally go to what's this and let's do it. So I'm gonna go through a couple of these. How long have I been going? Okay, not that long given the, uh, the fact that I cut ahead in the video. So we're gonna go through a few of these now. Um, and then in the next episode, we'll go through a few more. If we get through all of them, great. And then we'll do this process again. And hopefully this series will be over soon um, because I don't want to drag it out any longer than it needs to be. But I also want to continue to bring value. That's why I haven't rushed through any part of the process. That's why I didn't edit out all the crap I did on the clap tracks in the last episode. As much as it's kind of embarrassing to try those things and for it not to work. It feels good to try something and then it work, obviously. But nine, not nine times out of 10, but a good chunk of the time, you're going to try things and they won't work. And if I only edit it and show you the things I try that work, it's going to give, it's going to essentially be misleading that that's how it works. And I, as, as much experience as I have mixing, I still try things a lot. And I'm certainly less experienced than a lot of other people. So anyway, I just want that to be a part of what I show you is the reality that I make mistakes, and, you know, is this the best mix I've ever done? I don't know, like, I've mixed this song already and released it, so this is like the second time mixing it, which I don't think I'll ever get that same, you can never hear a song again the first time, and you can never really mix it again, so in the next season of Mixed Together, I've got a song that I'm mixing for a client that I haven't mixed before, I'm actually doing the client mix on camera for you, so that should be pretty fun. Okay, enough talking, let's go down this list, and again, I can't touch anything but what's on this list, that's the rule. All right, intro guitar a little brighter, okay? Let's go do that. Now, saying something needs to be brighter could mean one of two things. That could mean uh, something clipped at some point. 
That can mean either it needs to be a little less muddy or it needs more highs. Could be either. Either could be true. Um, so I'm going to go in to this final EQ on this guitar. I've got two EQs here. And I've already, well, I've already boosted the brightness a little bit. Let me just mess with that just a smidge. Actually, as I listen to it by itself, just on that intro, and it is by itself on the intro, I want it to be full, but it's actually got a little bit more low end than I probably want. It's got kind of a, like if we roll off everything on the top end real quick, just to let you hear. I mean, below 50 hertz, there's still a lot going on down there. Below 60 hertz, it's like, foom, foom, foom. that's not terribly helpful on this particular song. So I'm going to uh, bring my low pass, my high pass filter up a little bit, see if that solves the problem. I think it worked in getting a little rid of a little bit of that whoa, 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 rumble that was there. I think I could probably still boost this high frequency a little bit. So we're already boosted 2 dB. Let me just move it around a little bit and see if that helps. I misspoke. We're not boosted 2 dB. I'm not sure what it was boosted, but I boosted it just a little bit more, and it feels a little bit brighter, so a little boost, a little bit less low mids or low frequencies, and I think we're good. All right. I'm not going to overthink it. Please don't overthink things. That's the surest way to just drive yourself crazy. Intro guitar a little brighter. <gasps> Boink. Check. Next, intro snare a little brighter. Now, we got to take this into account. We got to take this into consideration with that the snare feels a little too loud and pokey, and that the snare feels uh, a little loud in general. So those are, we're essentially dealing with all four different to-dos at one time because they all relate to the same thing. So let's just listen on the chorus, for example. So All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to bring the snare down. And the way I'm going to do it, actually, is a way so I can get back to the, you know, never mind. Never mind. I was going to make it more complicated. We're just going to bring it down a few dB. So it's at volume is at 1.5. Let's bring it down like 2 dB, maybe. So down to negative 0.5. Let's see how that sounds. So much more. Okay, here's a tip. I don't do this a lot, and I'm not sure this is going to work, but I remember, I want to say maybe it was Steven Slate posted this one time. He was posting like drum mixing tips on Twitter. I can't remember. And I want to say maybe it was Dan from the Pro Audio Files who compiled them into like a blog post, and that's where I actually saw them. So shout out to those people. If you don't follow them, you're insane. You're not insane, but you're crazy. Um, so he said, if, you, if your snare needs a little more brightness, try turning up the brightness of your overhead track. So find maybe that kind of specific frequency that's kind of the brightness of the snare and boost that on your overheads as opposed to boosting it on the individual snare track because the individual snare is not going to have a ton of brightness it'll have some right but um that kind of more natural brightness can sometimes happen on the overhead so i'm going to try that i don't know if it's going to work but we're going to give it a shot because there's all obviously there's there's cymbals and there's hi-hat and there's other things in that same ballpark so if it makes those worse it's not going to work but I'm going to try it here just because it came to mind and I want to. And again, we're still we're still just doing this one to do. Let me move this over. Why would you hide behind my EQ? Okay. We're still working on the snare. I'm not I'm not getting off track. I'm not breaking my own rule, but um I want to try that. Let's see.
I think that helped a little bit. I, I boosted it way up and I liked it, but obviously that's usually never a good idea to go that extreme. Let's go back to the intro when the drums come in and see how it sounds. Okay, so two things. Um, well, one additional thing. I feel like that sounds pretty good. It's not hugely different, and I don't want to go undo everything we've done on the drums and redo it because I think we're pretty close, but I just brought the bottom snare mic up in addition to that high-frequency boost, and it feels pretty good. So I'm going to leave it. Obviously, when I go back and re-listen again, and I'll probably add in some earbuds to a, to a future listen because that really brings out a lot of the, any kind of weirdness in the upper mids comes out on those pretty well. We'll revisit that if we need to, but for now, I'm going to call that done. That's the snare, snare, <laughs> snare. All these snare to-dos are essentially done. Um, so let's move on to the swirl before the pre-chorus needs to go down. So let me just, I'm just going to do that. Um, I didn't hear that as obviously in the, uh, when I listened on the small crap speakers, but I probably wasn't listening for it that time. Which is one of the reasons why listening on multiple systems, it's not just the different speakers. It's that while I'm typing something up on one thing, something another problem may come by and I may not hear it because I'm not focused on it. So what I'm going to do here is literally, this is the automation that we did on the background vocals, that delay that that's happening. This is where we fade in and bring it back down. So it is right now at negative 22. So I'm just going to bring that down 3 dB. So... Negative 22 down to negative 25. 3 dB changes are a great place to start. It almost always is the right thing. So I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll see if that stands out to us next time. I'm not even going to listen because I, it was just about right. 3 dB down will probably nestle it in there perfectly. All right, upper mid notch. on the. We're going to get all these knocked out in this video. So boom. All right, upper mids are annoying on the vocal. So let's, uh, let's get a different view here. Let's find our vocal. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my crap speakers because it really was annoying on those, and that'll be helpful. And on the, it really was on the right in front of me. The me was really spiky. That'll be our kind of test section. In front of me. In front of me. So it's when I kind of round off that vowel to like really, not round it off, it kind of me gets really annoying and nasal. So the first thing we've got to do is figure out who's the culprit, right? Whose fault is it? We've talked about this before. Is it the main? So we got two vocal tracks. Is it the main one or the double? Hang on. In front of me. It, that's a dumb question because there's only one singing at that time. So what I'm going to do is when I'm doing this type of work, when I'm doing kind of either final tweaks for clients or this kind of phase of my mix. If I'm going to add some EQ that I'm not sure I want, instead of having to remember, okay, I went into this EQ and I changed this uh, or I added something to this EQ, I like to just go ahead and throw an EQ on at the end so that this is my, this is my changes EQ, okay? And I'm really just going to use this for that notch. So if it doesn't work and I want to take it away later, which I doubt I will because that's a really annoying frequency, uh, I can go and say, okay, this last one in the chain is the one that I most recently added. Let's take that away and see if we like it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn on the auto function so that when I jack this up volume-wise, it won't chop our collective heads off. And uh, let's find it. So I'm going to hit play. In front of me. The beautiful thing, I don't like to rely on these readouts, right? These uh, spectrum analyzers, but... It's helpful, like in this situation, I knew there's an upper mid frequency, and we can just look and not even hear it and see that it's probably right here. It's somewhere in this, um, what is this, about 2K-ish range. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the volume down anyway, because I know it's just going to be too loud, and let's find that exact frequency. In front of me, I've got so much more to give in in front of me in front of me I've got 
so much more to give than I could ever take in front of me. So there's kind of two frequencies that are being annoying. One is more in the key of the song and the other isn't. So I'm going to go with the one that isn't because that's going to sound more dissonant anyway. Um, we may need to address both. And honestly, if we look back, this, these may be frequencies we've addressed. We've taken, we've taken down at 2.6 already, um, but obviously it wasn't enough. Even with our multiband trying to go after 2K, we got to be a little more aggressive with it. So I'm going to take that frequency and bring it down. In front of me. I mean, that's just awful. In front of me. I've got so much more to give than I in front of me. I've got. There have only been a handful of times in this whole series where I've done something that actually makes a, you know, a really noticeable like night and day difference for the better. Um, and this is one of them, I think. So let's turn this EQ off. Listen to the vocal just in the context of the whole mix. Listen to how when I sing right in front of me, it gets it just jumps out, especially if you're listening on smaller speakers. In front of me. It almost is a like a different sound comes in. And now let's turn that EQ on and listen to it without it. You can hear it kind of wants to go there, and I'll actually pull that down just a little bit more, but it, it something stops it. And so it's just by removing that one frequency, um, we've kind of transformed the whole mix. Let me switch to the big speakers and listen just one more time. Here's without. In front of me. It's not as bad on the big speakers, um, which means when we take it away, it probably won't sound that different. But we now we know it sounds better on small speakers, which is a win as well. In front of me. Now my thought is, okay, should the vocal now come up just a little bit because it feels like maybe that made it a little quieter? Eh, does it matter? That was not one of the things on the list. So we took care of the upper mid notch, which we took on two different notes. And we're not going to deal with the vocal anymore because that's the rule. If it stands out again in a future listen, we're going to trust that our ears will pick it out next time we listen. But for now, we're just going to deal with the problems. Okay, solo guitar is a bit loud or spiky. Meaning we either need to do the same sort of EQ thing on it or it's just a little too loud. So let's listen. I'm going to go back to my crap speakers because they are kind of like my detectives today. And let's listen. Okay. I switch between my small and big speakers. On the big speakers, it sounds fine. On the small, it's a little too loud, which means it's probably not a volume thing. It's a frequency thing. So I'm going to do the same exercise. going to bring an EQ over. Let's take a quick look at the readout. Kind of that same thing, kind of in the upper mids. Let's just go find it and destroy it. Okay, that frequency is annoying, so we will make it narrow, we'll bring it down. Now, one thing comes to mind, and I'll close with this. I think that sounds better in the mix. Okay, so some final thoughts. We are done, we have finished our list. Um, couple of thoughts on this, you may have noticed uh, I was switching, I was using the, essentially the same frequency that we cut on the vocal is the one we cut on this solo. And so that could mean a couple of things. And I'm aware of this and I just want to talk about it. I don't know exactly what the, the final answer is, but it's worth talking about. So these small, it could be that these small speakers tend to emphasize that specific kind of 2 to 4K range frequency. Okay, It could be the boxes themselves. So by me cutting it, I'm actually just compensating for my speakers and not actually helping the mix. It also could be that my room, the dimensions of the room, make it more prone to ring at that frequency, which again, by EQing it in the mix, I'm making it sound better here in my room, but I may not be helping the mix, okay? But 
What I will say is when I make those changes, it's almost always to make it sound better on the smaller speakers, and it doesn't seem to make things sound too different on the large speakers, okay? And that's important because it means I'm essentially tuning my mix to sound good on small, crappy, mid-range, heavy speakers, but they still are working on the big speakers. If I ever have a decision where it sounds good only on, I have to decide between the two, I'm going to probably go with the big speakers um, because they're more true and more accurate, but... Usually what I find, and this, this happens over and over again, if I take some of those upper mids down to where everything sounds smooth and not super like chop your head off on these speakers, it tends to still sound fine on the big speakers and headphones and everything else. Also, I've noticed that whatever, when I use like little Apple earbuds, whatever tends to stand out on those in the upper mids also tends to stand out on these speakers. So if I fix it here, I also fix it here. And then the big speakers, it almost seems irrelevant. So I don't know what all that means, but that's just kind of my process and kind of where I'm at right now. You may, I may do a video two years from now and say I was completely stupid. It was, it was all just flaws in my technique in the room and the speakers and I was just hurting myself. But for now, it seems to be a system that's working for me. Okay, that's it for this episode. In the next one, we will go do another listen or two. I'll probably bring in some earbuds and we'll listen another time or two and we'll make some notes and we'll do those notes. And if... If in the off chance we listen and everything sounds perfect, we'll be done. And in the more likely chance that there are a few things we need to address, we will address those things and keep doing this process until we got nothing else to complain about. Okay, thanks for watching. Again, link below if you want to download these tracks. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well so that you don't forget about me. Okay, I'm out. See ya.